Okay. Hi, Joanne. How are you? Good. Good job. How are you today? Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. You are here to promote a book. Your book is called Summons to Berlin, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. You are also a full-time psychiatrist. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long have you been a psychiatrist? Say about 40 years. Oh, wow. Long time. Yeah. A long time. Is this your first published book? Yes. I published articles in the scientific literature and uh, movie reviews and non-scientific literature, but this is my first book. Okay, I guess it begs the question, why did you decide to write this book? Uh, the story was so compelling that I, had, I, I, I just had to. Um, I, I have kept diaries since I'm a young, young girl, um, and about anything that's important going on in my life. And so that, that was one impetus. Uh, and the other impetus is that this be, be, was a legal case and a case that involved uh, the Nazis and the Holocaust. And I needed to have detailed notes. And then the probably more interesting thing, it was a very powerful story to tell. The fact of my going to Germany, to Berlin, over a nine-year period, fighting for a very large manufacturing building that the Nazis took from my family. It was a very compelling story, and I learned a great deal that I thought would, would be important to share with other people. Are the pictures behind you of your parents? Of uh, my grandparents. Oh, those are your my grandparents. My grandfather. Okay. Yeah. He was the uh, he and his nephew were uh, the owners of the building, and my that's my grandmother. That was his wife, also an extraordinary woman, um, and they lived in Berlin. And my grandfather was a, a very successful businessman. Uh, what what was unfortunate was that he didn't listen to reason about leaving Germany. Uh, he he felt that the Nazi fever would blow over and that he wouldn't have to leave. Um, and there were a lot of people like like him. They became very accustomed to living there, and they figured they'd live there as long as they had you know enough money to pay for themselves. But uh, you know time ran out on them, and. Uh, Fortunately, they left on what was called the last sealed train out of Berlin. So a train that left that that wasn't identified as going through any particular country, but first went to Spain and then to Portugal. And they in Portugal they waited for a ship to come to the United States, which it ultimately didn't go directly to the US. It went to Cuba and where they lived for a while, and then ultimately they, they got to the United States. And sadly, my grandfather died the day after he arrived, you know, from the exhaustion and the stress. Um, and uh, fortunately, he saw my father, who had now been in the American Army. They, they had a few hours together before he passed away. Your grandfather died the day after he arrived in the United States? In, in the a day after he arrived in New York, the they uh, he they flew they flew into Miami from Cuba where they had lived nearly a year, and took the train up, checked into a hotel on the west side. In the meantime, my father's coming from where he's stationed somewhere in western Pennsylvania. They meet. They I don't know what was said, what was exchanged. Um, and my grandfather passed away right there. Wow. How old was yeah. he at that point? He was in his middle 60s. Yeah. Okay. So not a young man. No. Not a young man, but really before his time, it, 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 the stress was enorm enormous, uh, as it was with many people in that generation. Many of the elderly people that I knew who had come from uh, Europe, particularly Germany, died with just in, in, in just a few years of arriving in the United States. 
Well, I we can it only just, imagine what Germany was like in stress. Yeah. In that yeah. time period. And yes. According to your bio, they were Jewish, right? Yes. Yeah, so that would have been yes. would have been a, a pretty yes, difficult situation. Yes, of course they, they were victims of anti-Semitism. Yeah. All their money and livelihood was taken and this building uh, popped up after uh, the wall came down. Uh, when the wall came down, we found out that our family name was on what's called a Grundbuch, which is a history of the ownership of a building. And uh, there it was with the other relative that owned it with him. Uh, the issue, though, was that uh, uh, the people that owned the building or took the building in what's called a forced auction in 1938 claimed the building was their building, that we did not lose the building because of anti-Semitism. And so that was the basis of the nine years back and forth for me to go to Germany to fight these people and find out what the details were about this building, how these people got a hold of it, who they were, finding their Nazi records, their history. I hired an international detective um, and also finding out what occurred in the building uh, during the ownership of, of these Nazi people. And what was ter terrible, first they, I learned that every, every uh, flag that you see in any newsreel that has to do with the Nazis, whether it's the, the Olympics or, you know, Nazis at war, uh, were, was made in the in that in the family building. Second of all, in uh, 1941, September 1941, the uh, manufact you know the manufacturers in that building were given the order to make one million Jewish stars, bolts of Jewish stars, bolts and bolts and bolts that would be then sewn on Jews to identify them. You see this in lots of newsreels and movies about Nazis, that the Jewish star had, is patched onto their clothing. And so one million of them, that's where it all started inside that fa my family building. Those are the yellow stars that I've seen. Yes, yeah. exactly. Ex exactly, Doug. Exactly. Those are the stars that you see. And it occurred. So it took me nine years to find this stuff out. Uh, people were not interested in me getting any history of the building. And uh, and the little history that I did have, they wanted me to negotiate. In other words, they wanted, they, the, the, they everybody wanted the building sold because the market in, in Berlin was very, uh, uh, it was a hot market after the war, the wall came down. And my insisting on the history of the building, you know, what the story was slowed everything down, which made the buildings less valuable and, and people would be afraid to buy it because it would be in, the building would be involved in a restitution case. So I was under tremendous pressure not to be so inquisitive and interested in the story of the building. However, that was not my nature to, to back down. And so I went back and forth for nine years and ultimately with, with the help of a, investig a wonderful investigator, we got the Nazi party history of the people involved. We got the order that the building received to make the Jewish star, one million Jewish stars. And still people were fighting me. And uh, uh, but ultimately, uh, with the help of some advice, I accepted a, a negotiation, which was to pay these people off a sm very small amount so that the case would be over. Uh, I had friends and advisors in New York that were concerned about how involved I was, and they felt that I needed to get on with my life. I had a career, a wonderful husband, a wonderful child, and all I wanted to do was was put my you know, wring their neck. These people. 
So you actually had to pay them to get the building back? I had to, yes, I, I had to. And I could have stayed forever fighting these people, but the the there was an organization that was in charge in charge of determining the outcome of contested German real estate, and they said, "I've got to give them something." And, or they, even though they agreed that the building belonged to my family, they would not fully allow it to go on on the market. Uh, the goal was to sell the to, to get ownership of the building and go on the market, and everybody get some money. Now, the money issue for myself was interesting because I only owned three point one five percent of the building um, and uh, and my brother as well. And, and my uncle owned six point, you know, 30%. So the money, it was, it was just in the beginning, it all sounded like, oh, I have money for my son's college fund. This is terrific. That was, there was, there was no, no money for any college fund. And my interest in the money became, um, uh, you know, was, was just went away. The more I couldn't find out about the building, the more people didn't tell me, the more they said my fa grandfather lost the building because he was a lousy businessman, not because he was a Jew. The more they angered me, the less interested I, it, I was in in any money, all I wanted to do was to know the truth. Your motivation for this whole investigation thing, it wasn't about the money for the building. Right, exactly. Yeah. Doug. Okay, so what, what happened to it? Well, the building, uh, an arrangement was made that these people were paid off a, a, small, a small amount, you know, um, then the building, you know, we all got paid and then uh, the building was sold and it became a commercial building, a very good looking commercial building. It was it was, a, it was an enormous building, very interesting, almost one city block in depth, New York City block in depth. And at, 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 at one point CERN bought it, the, the company in Switzerland that makes the reactors, the nuclear reactors, they, they bought the building uh, and actually were wonderful owners in that they heard about the building's history and they helped get a plaque made of what exactly happened in the building, you know, who owned the building, what was manufactured in the building. And they created this magnificent event in 2018, uh, you know, where some of the officials of Berlin came and they flew about 30 of their people from, uh, from Zurich, Switzerland. And we had a really beautiful uh, ceremony and acknowledgement uh, about, about the building. It, it was really very special. Joanne, we are just running out of time very quick. We're going to have to wind this down. Thank you for coming on the show. The book is called Summons to Berlin, Nazi Theft and a Daughter's Quest for Justice. And the book is out now? Yes, it is. I've gotten some great reviews. Some people say it's like an a incredibly good mystery story. It, 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 people have been very pleased with it, I'm happy to say. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Uh, the last question is, do you have a website you want to give out? Yes, it's just my name, Joanne, J-O-A-N-N-E, and the last name, Intratour, I-N-T-R-A-T-O-R.com. Just my, my full name, dot com. Okay, great. Well, Joanne, thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing your story. It's pretty amazing. And Thank uh, you, Doug. Best of luck with the book. I hope it does well. Oh, oh. Thank you so much for having me.